Hi friends, Ginger here. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, hi, how are ya? Today I'm bringing you guys my January Rewind. So you're probably like, why aren't you calling this a wrap up? Well, because I'm not just talking about books. I decided I was going to talk about books, movies, games, and anything fun that happened in January. So if you're just here for books, I will make sure to leave the number that you can skip to here and you can just do the book stuff, but I will do the other stuff first so you can go ahead and skip if you want to. But I encourage you to stick around for the whole video because I think that I have a very interesting life. Anyway, so January is when I pretty much started booktube again and I've been so so happy with the progress I'm making and with everything that I'm creating and how happy I am to be back in the community. I also started my spring semester of my junior year of college. I am doing a lot of education classes because I recently changed to secondary education biology so that's fun. So far school is going very well and easy and so it has not interfered too much with my reading because I got a lot of books read this month. I have been working, I have been doing homework and reading and just it's been a pretty smooth month so far. Well I guess it's the end of the month. It's been a pretty smooth month so I'm glad to report on that. So first I'm going to talk about the movies and TV shows I watched this month because there's quite a handful and usually I don't watch that much so I figured hey I should talk about them because a few of them are also book to movie or show adaptations so that is very exciting. The first thing I watched this month was the adaptation of Watership Down that Netflix recently put out um, and it is a four part mini series and I absolutely adored it. I'm not I'm not rating the movies and stuff, but I definitely recommend it, especially if you loved Watership Down as much as me. The animation was awesome and the story was played out so well and it was just mm, so glad that I watched it and it made me so excited when it came out. I just was like, I have to buy Netflix just to watch this. So I did. The next book to movie adaptation thing that I watched uh, in January was Twelve Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han, which I read this book back in last year, I think in the summertime, or maybe in the beginning of the year. I think I maybe read it for my romance readers from last year. I'm not entirely sure, but I really liked it, and so I was like, ah, I have nothing to do tonight. I'm gonna watch a movie. Uh, I cried a little bit. It was just, it was so well done. I think that it just portrayed the story very well. It was very on point, and the characters were portrayed well and I am very glad that I watched it because I loved it and I can't wait for the second part to come out but that also means I have to read the rest of the series which I'm planning to do in February. The next book to movie adaptation I watched was Dumplin and I have not read this book but the title card, the, the trailer on Netflix really intrigued me so I sat down and watched it and I also really loved that movie. I don't know how well it plays with the book and I would like to read the book at some point but I just think it had a lot of positivity and good messages and diversity, a lot of diversity. So that, I'm so glad that I watched that and I definitely recommend the first three things that I just talked about. Actually I recommend most of the things I'm going to talk about in the movie section which is surprising because like I said I don't really watch movies unless they're like Marvel movies and I go out to the trailer the theater to watch them. Boyfriend and I decided to start a new anime which we have so many to catch up on but it's fine. So we started watching Castlevania which is actually a originally was a game and now they made it into a series or an anime series and we watched the first season because there's only four episodes and uh Trevor Belmont is mm, I love him as a character. He is such a genuine, doesn't care character and I love that. And uh, definitely would recommend that as well. Um, it's it's like a fantasy anime and uh, it's really good and I can't wait to continue on watching more because so far I am hooked. Oh, also vampires, so if you're into that. 
And the other series that I've been watching with Zach is Firefly. Uh, this is my first run through through Firefly. And of course I'm loving it. It's just, it's amazing. It's funny. It is uh, so good. And I love, I love all the characters so much. So I'm glad that I'm finally watching that series because it is amazing, as everyone has said that I've ever talked to. And we're not quite done with it, but we're getting there, and I, we're taking it slow because we're trying to savor this this show, since we know we know what happens at the end. And the last thing that I watched this month was Monty Python and the Holy Grail for the first time. And it was awful. Yeah, I hate it. I don't I don't understand why people are obsessed with this movie. It was boring. It was a waste of an hour and 30 minutes of my life. It was not funny. It was just not good. And I like was so intrigued with the hype and now I am disappointed because the hype was nothing. There's nothing there. So that was the one I would not recommend to anybody. But the rest of them you should definitely watch. So now I'm going to talk about the games that I have finished or started or been playing in January. There are a couple of those too. So I'm going to talk about the ones I finished first. And I'm not trying to go into super detail with these because I know you're like, I'm here for the books. Or most of you are. But the first game that I finished was Red Dead Redemption 2, which my heart has forever because it was amazing and I love Arthur Morgan as a character and it was just it took so much out of my life to finish that and it was just it was wonderfully done I love the like western type of outlaw thing like I think that's so intriguing and there was just so much story and representation of what actually happened in that time period and it was just it was wonderful and I'm sad that I finished it in a way but they're still online so I can still do stuff and I'm going to play the first one because I'm actually going to play them in order because I never played the first one. So I'm still going to get the Red Dead World for a while, but I'm still sad that I finished because it was just so good. The, uh, the next game that I finished was called Faye and it is about this little creature thing and pretty much just an easy, fun game to play and I finished it very quickly. Um, it was a little confusing at first because it doesn't really give you a good tutorial, but um, Faye is adorable and the sounds that he makes are adorable. And it was fun and quick and easy and it was fine. It was just a fine game, so I'm glad that I could finish it. And the last game that I finished in January was SteamWorld Dig 2 and I loved SteamWorld Dig 1 and I played it on the DS and then it came, um, the second one came out and it was on Xbox as well, so we got it when it was like five dollars and I played it in a day. It was just, it was great and like, I actually at the end was like, oh my goodness, has this really just happened? Like, even though it was just a, a little easy game and it's fun and whatnot, like, the story was so pure and I was just like, I want a third one already. <laughs> so I definitely would recommend you play that if you like playing games that are like easy and you're not really looking for like in-depth Red Dead 2 games because it's fun. You mine, you like, that's fun, right? I don't know. I'm into that. And then the other two games that I am playing, uh, the first one is Dark Souls Remastered. I'm actually almost done with this game and I'll probably finish it in February so I'll be able to talk about that more in depth if anyone's interested. Uh, it's been a long journey, this Dark Souls, and it is frustrating. It is hard, but it is worth it, and I don't know why I'm clapping, because that's probably really loud. Um, but that game is just really good, and it teaches you a lot about patience and controlling your anger, because when you die and lose all your souls, if you don't know what Dark Souls is, it's like currency, you, you just kind of want to break down and cry and never do anything again. But you get back up and you keep doing it, and eventually you win. Sometimes. And the most recent game that I started was Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which is an Xbox original game, and uh, my boyfriend has been telling me to play it for a long time, and I've been afraid to play it, start it because when I start games that have long stories, I'm just like, I'm afraid I'm never going to get to the end, and that's, that's, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not patient, okay? So, but uh, I did start it, and so far I'm loving it, I'm loving the story, and 
characters and it's just it's a really well made game for the time so I am excited to continue on and be able to talk about that later on. So now that I've done all that stuff I can actually get into the books. So I'm gonna start off with my stats real quick. I read 11 and a half books in January which is pretty good like I'm pretty proud of myself. I read six YA and five full adults and then the other one I'm working on is also an adult book and I read the exact number is gonna be here but almost 5,000 pages so that is pretty crazy um, and my average rating was 3.65 so unfortunately I didn't have like a ton of freaking amazing books this month but um, there were plenty that I would still recommend or that were decent so without further ado I'm going to get into talking about them and I'm doing this in order I read them not star rating so in case you were wondering so the first book that I read this month which took me longer than I wish it had to finish was Unravel Me by Tahara Mafi and I'm going to be talking about the Shadow Me series in depth next week so stay tuned for that but I ended up giving this book probably three or less. It was very slow and I just had issues with it that I like I said I'll talk about in the more in-depth review but uh, I just did not like book two and then I did read Ignite Me which I did rate higher. I gave that one a like 3.75. I think that there was better character development and it was more fast paced and whatnot even though I still had issues with it and uh, Warnet is the whole reason that I like this book. I mean I, I understand now. I understand that love. So uh, yeah I read those two books at the beginning of the month and was not super super impressed but I still read them and I can say that I read the original Shatter Me trilogy now. Yay! The next book I read was Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. So yes, I finished the Grisha trilogy and I gave this one a four. I think that it was a pretty decent wrap up to the series and I pretty much, I, I enjoyed it for the most part. I will be doing a series review of this eventually as well so I can talk more about it but yeah it was it was okay I gave it a four because like I said it was a good wrap up to the series but I still had a few issues with it but I did like it better than than Siege and Storm maybe I don't know one of the books in the series I didn't like as much but I did I did pretty much like this one and I'm excited to continue on in this universe because I got six girls and King of Scars just came out and Nikolai is my bae so and then my highest rated book which was almost a five that i read this month and i cannot wait to continue on in this series is throne of glass by sarah j mass yes i finally got to this book and uh i loved it i think it was awesome i love selena she's a very badass character and kale and dorian as well i really enjoy so um i gave this uh, a 4.75 uh there were just a few tiny little things that made me from giving it a full five out of five stars but I'm still going to continue on with the series and I cannot wait to see where it takes us because again I really really enjoyed this book and who knows eventually this might bump up to a five if I love the whole series you never know I ended up participating in Buzzwordathon if you didn't check out my vlog already I'm gonna link it up here or up here I don't remember I think it's up here probably and so a few of those books I got from the library and I'll have to just put up right here but the first book that I read was The Lion Game by Ruth Ware this is my second Ruth Ware book that I've read and I gave this a I think 3.75 I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars close enough and I enjoyed this more than the first book that I read by her um I think that it had a lot of tropes in it there were also good parts to it. Um, I liked our main character who her name has slipped my mind right now. I liked the friendship that was still going on. It gave me Pretty Little Liars vibes a lot and even though it was an adult book so there was that that was taking some YA ideas and putting it into an adult novel was a little eh but um, overall it was fine and I, I'd recommend it if you're interested in that kind of thing. It's about a um, girls who went to a boarding school when they were younger, stuff went down, and now they think that stuff is coming back to 
haunt them pretty much and they're dealing with that kind of thing. And the second book I read for Buzzwordathon was When Perfect Live by Lisa Scottaline and unfortunately this was the worst book that I read this month and I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. The main reason was that it was so boring. It was so boring and it was just not a thriller that I am interested in. It wasn't really mysterious, it was more like terroristic, dealing with uh, cops and FBI and what kind of stuff and that was, I wasn't expecting that. I think Lisa Scottaline has a good writing style but this book just did not do it for me and so far my experience with her has not been great so that is disappointing. But I'm still gonna give her a try because I have another one of her books up there. So hopefully that one changes my mind. If not, I guess I'm done with Lisa Scott Aligned because so far I've just not been impressed, which sucks because she has so many books out there. And I feel bad. <laughs> the third book I read for Buzzwordathon was The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sayer, and this was the buddy read for the month. And I gave this one 3.75 out of 5 stars. This one has similar vibes to The Lion Game. A girl went to a summer camp and stuff went down and now things are coming back to haunt her. And I think that it was a very good slow burn thriller. And so I appreciated for that. And the writing style was really good. There were just some tropes again that I were overdone. And the romance that happened in there, I don't think it needed to be a thing. It didn't need to be a thing. Why would you put that romance in a thriller? It just it was not my favorite. But I definitely will still give, uh, I would like to read Final Girls because again I like the writing style and I think that it was a fine book. It was almost four stars so it was, it was pretty good. And yeah, I'm glad that I read it. I have the other two books here. They were actually on my TBR. So the fourth one was The Sacred Lives of Minnow Bly by Stephanie Oaks. This was my second favorite book of the month. I gave this also, I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This was wonderfully written. It was so interesting. It was very unique. Um, this follows our character Mina Bly and she has just been, she just came into the real world pretty much out of a cult setting that she's lived in for 12 years of her life and we're kind of just learning about that experience for her and learning about Minnow as a character and the lies that she's been told about what is real and what's not and also she doesn't have hands so that was interesting and you learn that like very early in the book so that's not a spoiler but I was just like oh boy that would suck so bad so definitely would recommend this book it was so wonderful and it is a great YA hard-hitting kind of novel and the last book I read for Romance Readathon was Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty and I really love this one too I gave it a four out of five stars uh, maybe a little higher this wasn't even really a thriller per se um, it was a domestic mystery maybe I don't know, this was a really good book um, dealing with people who have young children and bullying and learning to live with things in your past and learning to deal with things that are coming to you in life and I'm not someone who has kids and whatnot but this was still a really really good novel and I understand the hype over it and I'm glad that I have it and read it because again I really did enjoy it. The main reason it wasn't a 5 out of 5 for me was that it was just a little slow and I couldn't relate to it um, on a personal level and that was really that's selfish for me to make the rating lower because of that but it was hard to sympathize with the characters in a way because some of it just seemed like either I was like oh that I wouldn't put up with that or oh I, I've never experienced that I don't I actually know if this is right or not so maybe if I read this in a couple years uh, if I reread this in a couple years uh, I would probably give this a five out of five because I have more experience with like children and stuff like having my own but yeah I would definitely recommend this because it was just it was really well written and it had great ideas and the plot twist was really really good so definitely would recommend the next book I read in the month, I actually started before Buzzword Readathon and then finished afterwards because I paused everything else for those lie books. And that was The Last Romantics by Tara Conklin. I received this for review. No way swayed my opinion. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars mainly because I literary fiction is a very hit or miss for me. and. I think that this was well written and it had interesting ideas and it was about a girl growing up and whatnot but that was kind of boring for me I'm not gonna lie 
I just thought that it was slow paced for me personally. Um, I just gave it an average rating and if you are a literary fiction guru and you're interested in like the life story, fictional life story of someone from young age to adulthood, definitely pick this up because I think you would really like it. But again, it's just it was just a little too slow paced. So and it took me longer than I wanted to, to read it because of that. So that's why it was a three out of five. But I still would recommend it if you are into literary fiction. The last book that I completely finished this month was Sadie by Courtney Summers and this had a lot of hype at the end of the year last year and I finally got around to reading it. I did not love this as much as other people. Maybe it's because I've read many more thrillers but I did give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. Still good. The writing style was awesome. Uh, the podcast part for me like I think it would have been better if I listened to it on audiobook because it was kind of hard to read like to envelop myself in that as much as say the actual novel parts. I think what gave this such hype was that it was a YA novel that was dealing with heavy subject matter and that wasn't done in quite the way that they did it in this book for a very long time and I think that's why many people really liked it. They never experienced something like that. But me reading many adult thrillers that part wasn't surprising. The ending did not do it for me. I did not appreciate that ending and <laughs> I uh I wanted answers, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like it when I don't get answers in thriller books. So, those were a couple of the reasons that I didn't give this a five out of five, even though many people did. I would still recommend it if you want to give a YA thriller a try, because for a YA thriller, this is really good. And um, if you aren't really a thriller reader, this is gonna be really good for you. Because again, I've just read so many thrillers, this wasn't like anything super, super special. But I have it and I'm glad that I read it and I could give my own opinion on the hype. The last book I want to talk about because I said I read 11 and a half books by the time I'm putting this up. I could be finished with it. I don't know because I'm filming this not quite by the time that you but I am making my way through one of my most anticipated series that I want to read and uh, this is a hunk of a book and that is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan which is the first book in the Wheel of Time series. This is a very thick and chunky paperback with very tiny words so it's taken me a while. I am over halfway through now actually and I expect to finish this definitely this week or by this weekend so like February 2nd it'll be done. I definitely wanted to talk about it briefly because I am loving it so far. I'm probably going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, obviously I don't know what's going to happen in this large chunk yet but so far I'm loving the characters. I'm loving the representation and the world building and everything that it has to offer. So, so far I'm so excited that I'm reading this and I cannot wait to finish it and actually talk about it and give you my full rating. But I wanted to talk about it right now because I have it and by the time that I talk about it again it'll be back at the library unless I buy it on thrift books because <laughs> I love to buy books. It's a problem we all have, right? So that is my January rewind. That is all the things, books, movies, and games and whatnot that I've done this month. And I hope that you guys enjoyed learning about all that and maybe you guys have some new movie game or book recommendations that you're gonna go pick up this month, this coming month in February. I hope so because I read watched and gamed a lot of good things but thank you guys so much for watching and remember if you like this to please subscribe and like this video and I hope to see you all in my next videos bye